I get a lot of flack for putting so much emphasis on mind-muscle connection and tension control. Not that I could blame anybody, because it does seem like one of those bro science -y things that is based a little bit more on sort of assumption rather than hard evidence. And I used to hold those same beliefs for years myself. But after so many years, of going to therapists and chiropractors and doctors and trainers about one issue after another, and every single time the problem was always a lack of tension control in key muscles, I had to recognize there's a pattern here. But nevertheless, there are many who will still say that it's a lot of bro science mumbo jumbo, and the biggest reason for this is because it's based on a lot of gross misunderstandings on what the mind-muscle connection actually is and how it actually works. So the first misconception is that mind-muscle connection is all about thinking about the muscle while you're exercising. This is one of the reasons why a lot of the evidence-based research reports out there trying to establish the validity of mind-muscle connection show eh, results. Mind-muscle connection has almost nothing to do with thinking about the muscles. I could think about a light bulb all day long and no matter how much I concentrate it, it's not gonna turn on. However, the second I flip on a light switch and send electricity through it, it lights right up. When it comes to conditioning our muscles, the thing that tells our muscles to contract as hard as possible isn't the exercise we do or the weight in our hand, it's our nervous system. This is why they call it the neuromuscular system. If our body was a car, our muscles are the wheels, but our nervous system is the actual engine that drives the wheels, aka your muscles. So developing that mind-muscle connection isn't about thinking about the muscle any more than driving your car is all about thinking about your wheels. Instead, it's about concentrating on putting the tension in the muscle and getting the muscle to respond likewise, and that's what we're trying to do. The other misconception is that it's all about a bodybuilding thing. You hear bodybuilders talk about mind-muscle connection, but when it comes to athleticism and health and stuff, people are like, ah, that's not for me. The foundation of all success in any training method, from ping pong to powerlifting, boils down to how well you control and regulate the tension in your muscles. So if you want to improve performance as an athlete, make sure you've got good tension control in your posterior chain, particularly your glutes and hamstrings. If you want to have better health and protect your joints, make sure you have good tension control in your muscles that serve as the shock absorber for those joints. And yes, of course, if you want to make muscles bigger and stronger, then sure, you're going to need that tension control because if you do not have that sort of control of putting tension in the muscle, almost nothing you do will ever be very effective. But the good news is that if you do improve that tension control in the muscle, you can have even a sort of meh level of programming and intensity in your workouts, and it's still going to be pretty darn effective. A third misconception that I really fell for myself was that technique is everything, and that your muscles are going to be doing what they're supposed to be doing as long as you have really good technique. And of course, yes, technique is incredibly important, but it's not going to be the full solution to ensuring that your muscles are doing what they're supposed to be doing during the exercise. Never underestimate your body's ability to have compensatory habits to still get the exercise done, even if it's not sending a lot of tension to key muscles like your lats, your core, your glutes, hamstrings, and so on. This is why I often recommend, if you're trying to improve tension control, try using a lighter level of resistance with some of your classic exercises. Because the heavier you go, and the more volume you're using, the more you're reinforcing compensatory habits to be even stronger, and it's harder to get out of those habitual ruts and improving that tension control. And the last misconception about mind-muscle connection is that it's a black and white thing. You either have it or you don't. Tension control is one of those things about fitness that's both conscious and subconscious, like our breathing. It's something we can consciously control, but most of the time it's just going on subconscious autopilot, which means that whatever level of tension control you have is probably going to be the level you stay at until you consciously focus on improving it, much like someone in Qigong or yoga may concentrate and focus on improving their breathing. And I'm always talking about the wonder of overcoming isometrics for doing just that, because it is by 
far the most effective method that I've found to improve your tension control. And to help get you started, I've got two videos here on my favorite exercises for waking up and putting more tension in those pesky muscles that may be holding you back in building your muscle, performance, and health. Check them out here. Let me know if you have questions down below. Be fit and live free.